right? So let us uh, speak on the Pasha. Based on the Rebbe Sichas, it's a Sichas Rebbe, but he explains the first Rashi in Pasha's Tzav. Rashi says right in the beginning that Tzav, the expression Tzav, which means command. Um, is an expression that denotes encouragement. To um, make sure that that this is this is to be is going to be done. And uh, then Rashi brings down. But Rabbi Shimon says that particularly you need special zealousness and encouragement when it comes to, to monetary matters. When there's a certain kiss, when there's a monetary um, uh, loss involved. So the Rebbe explains what is the what does it mean, Tzav is Russian zeros? And the Rebbe explains a very fundamental and overall a general perspective. We all know that mitzvahs, mitzvahs in the Torah, commandments in the Torah, the word mitzvah means a command, and the word mitzvah also is related to an Aramaic word that's called tzavsa. Tzavsa means correlationship, friendship, connection. And it's explained that a mitzvah is instrumental in connecting a yid with Hashem. That's what it's called mitzvah. It connects, it unites even with the Mevash, with Hashem. In simple terms, what this means is that in addition to all obvious benefits of a mitzvah, as for instance, mitzvahs direct us in the proper path to act appropriately, to do the right things, to stay on, on, on path, to live like human beings and so forth. So these are all um, so to speak worldly level benefits. But there is an overall a central theme in mitzvahs that is that supersedes supersedes, goes beyond any worldly practical benefit. And that is that it, it unites, connects Eden with Hashem. This is the, 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 the primary function and intent and benefit of mitzvahs. As we discussed Many times in the past, pointing out that, in fact, what is the primary difference between Yidin and the rest of the world? All human beings are obligated to behave like human beings. Excuse me? Is the for Malashan Zirus? Zirus, yeah. Huh? Zirizus. Not Zirus, Zirizus. All human beings, all people have to behave like human beings. And all people have what is known as the seven Noachide mitzvahs, seven mitzvahs b'nei noyach, which essentially put a person in a, in a, in a, um, 
in a, in a, in a, a status of, of, of decency, respect, and, and all other required principles of civil life. So they have seven mitzvahs. We have 613 mitzvahs. What do the 613 mitzvahs do for us? A 600 and and uh, six extra, most extra mitzvahs that they don't have. And the explanation that, that, that we have to understand is very, very significant, very important, that is that in Yidin, their, their status in the world is of a totally different quality than all other human beings, certainly other creatures, but even human beings, a completely distinct, quite different um, status, different set of obligations, different purpose, different meaning of their presence. And in, in, to express that difference in, in simple terms, that um, all people are they, 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 the extent of their obligation, of their human obligation, is to be human, to behave decently one to another, not to be destroying the world. They have no right to destroy the world. They have a right to live in it and to build in it, but that's it. The world is not theirs to destroy. Eden have a completely different obligation. Their obligation is to elevate the world to a godly status. Transform the world. And in order to accomplish that, that elite, so to speak, uh, uh, an accomplishment, this is something which human beings cannot accomplish on their own, no matter how wise and good and dedicated they are. We spoke at the time of Matan Torah that Matan Torah, the Torah was given to us. It was not really a novel thing because, because our forefathers, Avram, Yitzhak, Yankiv, also fulfilled all the mitzvahs, as it says. I'm sure you remember we discussed this. Around, you know, all the always learned Torah and they also fulfilled all the mitzvahs. And yet, when the Torah was given, it was a complete breakthrough, a new world, a new status. And the difference between their Torah and our Torah was that they they all did all the mitzvahs, but they did them on the basis of their own intellectual insight and their own understanding. In other words, it was a powerful human effort, but it was a human effort. And the power of the mitzvah was that of a human being. Whereas our mitzvahs, our mitzvahs are a representative of the godly presence in the world. When we do a mitzvah, we are actually performing a mitzvah, performing a, 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 a function that the Rebbe himself is performing through us. That's what a mitzvah is. Just as an emissary, somebody is, is, is fulfilling a duty because a person asked him to do something for him. So when he goes and he does the action, the action is attributed back to the to the Meshalech, to the one who asked him, who, who empowered him to do it. So too, when a yid does a mitzvah, the power of the mitzvah, the effect of the mitzvah, is that he is only, he is doing it as an emissary of the Hashem, and the effect of it is as powerful as Hashem himself doing it. This is why when we do a mitzvah with an object, with a physical object, the object itself becomes, acquires a state of holiness. Like the Torah, 
The Torah is extremely holy. How is it holy? The human being wrote it. It was written by, by a human scribe with, with ink and so forth. And the human being learns in it. But because it's a mitzvah, therefore it, beca- it acquires the power. It's as if Hashem himself wrote it. And the same goes for all the mitzvahs in the Torah, like tefillin. You know how holy tefillin are. You're not allowed to enter an unclean place with tefillin. You have to be completely pure. You have to be watch out that you, that that um, your activities are entirely um, clean during a time of davening, and so forth. And tefillin themselves have to be guarded. If if tefillin fall down. Has was shown, then there's a whole requirement. Sometimes you have to fast and so forth. If a, ta- if a, if a tailor falls down, God forbid, then the whole congregation fasts. So clearly, these things acquire a status way beyond that of human creativity, of human activity. This is the union of mitzvahs, how they connect even with Hashem. When they do it, it's Hashem doing it through them. This is mitzvahs in general. Mitzvahs are presented all in the Torah. And there are three different expressions in the Torah in representing the mitzvahs. The the mitzvahs were all given to Eden through Moshe Rabbeinu. Hashem told Moshe to, to, to instruct Eden with the mitzvahs. There are three different expressions in, in that presentation. There is an expression where it says, Daber Abne Yisrael. Hashem said to Moshe, Daber Abne Yisrael, speak to Eden and, yeah, and tell him this mitzvah. And there is an expression in the term that says, Amoir. And Moir of Yisrael, say or tell. Literally, a Moir means say. Um, some mitzvahs are presented with the expression of Moir, some mitzvahs are presented with the expression of Daber. Then there's a third expression that's called Tzav. Mm-hmm. Tzav is Bnei Yisrael. These three expressions have very distinct implications, very distinct um, qualities to them. You may have learned in Rashi, emoir is a soft, is a soft form. Mm -hmm. Daber is a hard form. Tzav is someplace in the middle, which we'll discuss in a in a moment. So that emoir, this soft form, that particularly relates to the the side of Chesed. You know that there are three kavim, three distinct lines. In, in the world, in Seder Hishtalsus, there's a, the Kavha, just like human beings have the right hand and the left hand. And then there is the middle. This is true regarding everything, everything in the world. There's the right and the left and there's the middle. The right is the Kavha Chesed, is the line of kindness and, 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 and uh, goodness, softness and pleasantness. The left is the Kav Hagvura, power, strictness, demand. That's the expression of Daber, of Dibura, hard speech. And then there is the middle. The middle is a very, it's a very interesting concept with this middle.
This is Chesed and Gvura in the middle is called Tiferes. Tiferes translated is glory, beauty. Because Tiferes, in fact, is is a cooperation or coordination or combination of both extremes, of the right and the left, of Chesed and Gvur. And um, as it says, Chesedus explains that beauty and glory is not found in one color or another. It's found in a in conglomeration of color, a proper, a, a proper balance of multiple different colors that gives a certain sense of, of glory and beauty. And that is what Tiferes is about. That was, this is the third, the middle, the middle way. Um... Which means, seems that there are three types of mitzvahs, mitzvahs that are expressed with emoir and daber and sab. That means that there are three different levels and different means by which we relate to Hashem. We relate to Hashem in the form of emoir. Hashem shows special kindness and goodness, and we in kind also in turn also reflect. And respond with with ahava, with with a special affection and so forth and, and, and joy in doing the mitzvahs of Hashem. Then there is the gvura. The gvura is the strictness and the demand. And uh, we respond also with gvura that we, we do mitzvahs uh, to forestall punishment, God forbid, and things of that nature. And then there is a, a, um, a totally um, different category, and it's called Tiferes, where it's not one extreme or another, it's not a question of kindness and, and affection, and it's not a, 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 a case of fear of, of, um, of consequence. It is a direct, all-encompassing relationship between Hashem and Yid. Now, among, as we go, we'll discuss it, and we'll bring it out a little bit more uh, tangibly. But we can readily understand even though that all mitzvahs represent a connection between Eden and Hashem, but there are different kinds of connections. Normally, when we say we have a connection between two things, so then these two things are connected through some kind of a means, or some kind of, something that connects it to them, but they remain essentially two entities that are connected. So, let's say if somebody does you a favor, and in response to that favor, you appreciate it and you, and you feel a certain, a certain affinity and connection to that person, you don't become one with the person. It's, it's the kindness, it's the affection between you that, that is instrumental in, in making this, this relationship. That's called a connection through chesed. Um, then there is a connection through the to the midas of gvura. Um, let's say uh, I'm, I'm taking, uh, uh, so to speak, an extreme example. 
the clarity, what? What was the first thing you remember? Kindness. Somebody did you a favor. Okay. So you're distinct two separate. What? So it's. Uh, so you remain two separate entities, except you're connected. By the, through the favor, through the goodness that he did to you, he did for you. Okay. Um, let's say, let's say, uh, people go to war. And in war, there is always a group, and every group that goes out to the front, has a commander, has a leader, a sergeant that leads this group. And it's imperative. Imperative means it's absolute must that everybody obeys what the sergeant tells him to do without question. Otherwise, he will put the entire group in danger. And um, as a matter of fact, it, uh, he is so trained, and it, uh, it is in the army code, that if you disobey the sergeant, you can be court-martialed, it's called. Which is, which is a very severe type of, uh, of a judgment, because you, you're, you're, you're endangering the, the whole group, and, and every group has its, its particular moment that they're responsible to, make, to keep this front, and if this falls, this could be an opening for, for defeat of the whole, of the whole um, effort. So there, there is also a big connection between the sergeant and his troops. They really obey every, every nuance, every, every command he gives them. But this, this uh, connection is based on, on, the, on the principle that you must, you must obey him otherwise there are consequences. Something very bad can happen. So this is like the connection through the mid of Gvura. So in either one of these cases, the connection is not frontally complete. It is based on one, on, on one extreme or another, on one aspect or another aspect. There's something that, that binds the two. You mean uh, it's based on consequence, yeah? Well, it could be consequences, and it could be a result of, of, uh, of previous deeds, not necessarily consequences. Consequences may be punishment. Uh, in the case of Chesed, you appreciate his previous kindness. You have, enough, you have an affection for one another. So in, 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 this, in this connection, the, the, they, are, they remain separate. So therefore, when the Rebbe Shter, Hashem gives us a mitzvah, and he says, Emoir of Bnei Yisrael, Emoir Loshon Raka, which means a soft, a soft form, he tells me to speak kindly to the Eden and, and explain to them the benefit of doing this mitzvah. And, and then he didn't listen, and, and, and as a result of that explanation, as a result of that approach, they take the mitzvah and, and they fulfill the mitzvah. So the, despite the fact that they do the mitzvah and so forth, still uh, there is that, that separation. There is the commander, there is Hashem, and, and, and there is the Eden, and there is something that connects and this affection that Moshe Rabbein has related to them, uh, between Hashem and them, uh, that this, this is what en entices them to go ahead and do the mitzvah. Same is on the other side. If Hashem says to Moshe, make sure that they do this mitzvah, tell them the strictness and the importance of this mitzvah in all certain terms. So that again makes Eden do the mitzvah. But, but it isn't a, a, a frontal, a complete connection. It's a connection based on some kind of a reason, some kind of a quality, something that, that connects them. <coughs> In both of these instances, uh, here's the thing that will help us understand. In both of these instances, 
when he didn't do the mitzvah, even though they were encouraged by Hashem and they warned for punishment and they were promised reward, regardless, when they do the mitzvah, they do the mitzvah on their own. They do the mitzvah because they figure it pays off to do the mitzvah. Because they're going to be rewarded. Or God forbid they're going to be punished. So their, their decision and the, 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 the inspiration to do the mitzvah is actually something which they have, which they have from, the, from themselves. From their own benefit. For themselves. Then there is this third line of connection. And this is called Tzav. The difference between Tzav and Amoir and Daber is precisely in this. Amoir and Daber is, says, tell them about the mitzvah. Encourage them to do it. But then leave it up to them to do it, essentially. That's the implication. Tell them about it. And, and hopefully they will do it. Or speak to them about it, tell them the strictness about it. In all cases, the actual deed and the final, the final decision of doing it remains in the hands of the Eid. Hashem only tells them to do it and they do it. In the word tzav, which means direct them, command them to do it, there there is a very special implication. And that is that Eden are, are told to do the mitzvah, but not told about the mitzvah, and then they go off on their own and do it. They are told to do the mitzvah all the way to the deed. In the, explanation, in the example that I gave you before of the, of, the, of the sergeant and his group, imagine a... A, um, an action that the sergeant, the final, an action the sergeant said, do this. He sends a soldier across the, the, across the road to go and, and, and pick something up and he has to come back to the group or something like that. Then there is a, a different thing. The sergeant said, let's go. And they all go together. And they all follow him. So they're also doing it because he said, let's go. But there, the let's go is not something that he, they go and, um, on his command, but he follows through with them. He's also following through in the action. This is a completely different, different level of, of, of relationship. But they, they, <laughs> not only is he telling them what is the right thing to do, but he is actually following through with them all the way to the deed. So that when it's being done, he is with them in the action. This is the implication of the word tzav. Tzav means tell them to do it, but don't just tell them to do it and leave it up to them to do it. Command them. Do it with them, so to speak. Carry it through all the way to the final, to the final accomplishment, to the final deed. This is called tzav. This type of of command, this type of relationship, goes beyond any connecting cord, connecting um, element that connects the commander to his to to his his followers. This is where he becomes one with them and they become one with him. So that from then on, for them to do what he says to do is not dependent on, on their judgment, of their agreement, I will do it. Oh, it's, it pays off to do it, I better do it. It gets automatic. If my commander said do, do, then I do automatically. There, is no, there, are, there are no separations. This is called, this is Shat Tzav. This is what's described, what's called 
that's Kav Ho'em Tsoi. Kav Ho'em Tsoi, so to speak, the middle, the middle Kav, the middle line, the Tiferes. This combines all elements of connection. It combines the element of kindness and affection. It combines the element of yira, of fear and, and respect. It has everything together. And actually it supersedes all other elements. It actually expresses a, a complete, a, a, a connection that is not based on intellectual or emotional recognition, but on a total personal connection, personal dedication. <laughs> it's like what you say, person to person, not based on reason, not based on, on uh, um, <laughs> threat or reward. Because we are connected, because we are one, this is why we do the things together. Uh, in the human being himself, in in a person's own life and a person's own activities and pursuits, a person also has these three kavim, these three qualities that move him, move him to do one thing or another. Sometimes he does things because he, he calculates this is going to be beneficial. It's a good thing for him to do it because he's going to get gain something as a result of that. Sometimes he does things because this will prevent any kind of a negativity from, from occurring. These are all valid reasons. But if we think about it, it's an interesting thing. Everybody knows that mitzvahs are a good thing to do. And that and navelas are not good to do. And yet, because that there is a kind of a separation between the deed and the and that which the reason that entices it. It is possible for a person to say, you know the expression, the heck, it's too hard for me. I don't care if I get reward or not. I don't care if I get a punishment. I just don't want, I can't do it. I don't want to do it. I'm too lazy. It's possible to say that. Yeah, you want me to do it? It's good. Thank you very much. It's very good. But I'm not up to it. Right? I'm not in the did you ever did, did you ever have that that um, unfortunate uh, embarrassing feeling right <laughs> <laughs> I know it but uh, but I'm still not doing it <laughs> right it's possible this is a, an innocent phenomenon sometimes we can we are intelligent people we are good people responsible people and with all that intelligence and responsibility, we can go straight into the pit. And I don't know how come it did. I, I just wasn't up to controlling myself, wasn't up to beguiling myself. That is true as long, you know, when the, when, when the action, when the, the, the path that a person is walking on is something that he leaves up to himself to make a choice. Am I going to eat supper? I'm not going to eat supper. Ah, forget it. I'm, 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 I'd rather take a walk. Okay, so I'm going to eat supper. Or maybe I'm going to go to sleep on time so I can get up in the morning. Or maybe I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying what I'm doing now. Forget about the morning. Right? We all have these kind of calculations. That is true as long as actions are guided by some kind of a reasoning. Whether it is, like I said, a kind of reasoning of kindness, oh, I can't miss Rabbi Lipsky's class, I can't miss Rabbi Ringo's class, or uh, I can't face the consequences of being reprimanded. <laughs> All of these things are 
bendable. You know, I can suffer it. But then there is, in 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 in, in the person, there is there is a certain super super reality. Super reality. It's not a question of getting reward. It's not a question of getting punished. It's not a question of, of of being appreciated or being reprimanded and so. On. I have to be a full fledged human being. And if I if I don't act according to this and I don't follow through on these responsibilities, I don't follow through on my conviction, I don't follow through on my decision, on my commitment. I'm not missing the reward, I'm not missing the I'm not gonna I'm, 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 it's not just suffering of of the of the uh, consequence. I lose myself. Who am I? This is not just a one way, a right or a left, good or bad. This is a, a something that the very, the very person, the very the, the full, the full power of the human element, full power of his own soul, that says there's no way I, I'm, I, uh, that I'm going to forfeit self-respect. Let's say. Forfeit respect for 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 Yiddish guy, respect for the neighbors. There's no way. It's not. There's nothing. This is not a question of of, of reward and punishment. It's not a question. It's not up to me to make a decision. This is who I am. I am a human being. I am a yid. Like the Alter Rebbe explains in Tanya, that that all challenges to Torah mitzvahs that a person has to fight with and fight over and, and, and work with himself are all at, some, at such levels, such things that, <clears throat> that touch him at some level, but not those that touch his very Jewishness. But if, 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 if it's a question, if a guy tells him, you know, worship an idol or else or else, um, or, you know, and there's a consequence. There's no question. He doesn't have to fight it. There's no. There's no way. There's no way. This is me. This is my. This is my very essence. This is called the middle way. This is that which incorporates all-encompassing reality of the human being. It encompasses both the right, the kindness, and the strictness, and supersedes that. Because this is a statement, as we said before, it's not a question of reward, not a question of punishment. It's a question of reality, of being a full-fledged human being, full-fledged yid. And as a yid, there's no way I can forego that. Everybody has something of that nature. Let me use the opportunity, I mean, let's discuss some, some examples. You know, there's a mitzvah in the Torah that we have to lay in Krishna every day in the morning before a certain hour. Right? The time when you get up, it's for a certain hour. It happens that now that hour is quite, quite extended, quite ahead. It's almost impossible to miss that time. But if you try very hard, you can miss that time. <laughs> In any case, this is one of the easiest mitzvahs to do, really. To miss a time of Krishna is, uh, you know, it, it's, like, uh, it's like negligence. Now it's 10 o'clock, sometimes it's 9 o'clock, sometimes it's a quarter to 9 it, it's it, it's not really that uh, that uh, challenging uh, to blink Krishna on time. All you have to do is wake up, Ashnagovasa, say Brochas, and Bichas Atayra, and blink Krishna, and then you can go back to sleep if you, if you so choose, if that's the case situation. <laughs> really, it's a very easy mission to, to do. Nevertheless, unfortunately, occasionally it's possible that we would miss it. Same thing. There is the there is a time that you have to daven with a minion. 
It's a mitzvah in Shulchan Noruch, you have to daven with the minion. Every day, Shachris, Mitzvah, Mitzvah. It doesn't always work out. Especially Shachris is really a mitzvah, you have all the things, he's a tailor sometimes, and so forth. It's important. And every year, he should start his day, you automatically, this is your Seder Hayyim, in the yeshiva, start his day, been going to Shulchan Noruch, Mitzvah, Mitzvah, Mitzvah. Nevertheless, it's conceivable that sometimes you don't make it. Sometimes, even even by negligence, you lazy it out, you didn't make it sure, and then you go quickly and you daven yourself. It's possible. That's possible. And it's possible to the extent where a person, after doing it a few times, it becomes tolerable. It's not so terrible, you know. I did it yesterday, what's so terrible? And nothing happened, so it's going to be tomorrow, okay. But the thought of not davening at all, at all that's, that's, that's not fathomable. That we can relate to. You can't forbid the person really miss davening, miss putting on fuel, he can't find a place for himself. It's not, it's not just a question of doing the right thing can find a place for himself. Why? Because this is not a question of doing the right or doing the left, being punished, being rewarded. Who am I? What kind of person am I? <coughs> I didn't do it to my own point of view. I didn't learn Krishna on time, oh, but I didn't learn Krishna altogether. I didn't doubt that's, that's, that, that doesn't, doesn't fit my whole persona. So this is kind of an illustration of the concept of, of something that connects even with Hashem, with Hashem not through one path or another, through one reasoning or another. To learn Krishna on time is a wonderful thing. You know, if you get used to learning Krishna on time, the, the, the minimum reward will be that you always get up on time. <laughs> You'll be up on time. And to daven with a minion, also there will be a direct reward. You'll be davening with other people. You'll be davening uh, in one place, like a mensch. You won't be just uh, lost, lost in, 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 in nothingness. There are all kinds of reward, all kinds of benefits. All kinds of benefits. The person starts off his day in the proper way, in, in Krishna and, and, and davening with a minion. His whole day is, is organized. His whole day is disciplined. It's, it's a completely different day. He's got... He's got so to speak, control over it. You guys don't have it yet because you are in, in Seder of Yeshiva, but people who do not have that kind of Seder, this is in, imperative to them. It's imperative. Nobody is there standing over their head. Nobody is saying, there's no Rabbi Lipsky to them, you know, to, to tell them how come you weren't in a mean today. And it's very easy to, to get lost, to, to, to lose it. And uh, you know, just to daven up and go and go to work and so forth. So it's a, there is tremendous benefits if you keep the person on, on track. So these are benefits, but that is not something that really touches the person altogether to a point where he can face himself. But if God forbid he misses that, he misses putting on film, then then his whole his whole face changes. It's a different person. This is the, the principle that, that is tzav. This is the very special encouragement, the very special zeros that there is in mitzvahs that supersedes all reasoning, the reward and the punishment, the right and the left. And Hashem says to Moshe, tell Yidin that wherever they do a mitzvah, I am with them. And this this gives it, gives them a completely different perspective. Once you have that type of perspective, then, um, as we said, then nothing will stand in the way. It's possible that you should not fulfill it, because there is no 
Nobody is going to say, forget it, I, I'm, I'm too lazy to be a human being. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm too lazy to be a yid. You, know, that, you can say I'm too lazy to be a, to be mahader in this, to be mahader in this, to do this or do that. But, to, but there are certain realities, personal identities, personal realities that are not, um, um, one cannot forfeit. This is the, the godly definition of what a yid is, a direct godly definition, which no one is capable of, of ignoring. And it carries through all the way to, to, the, to the most practical thing. But this, the Rebbe explains also, Uh, what Rashi bring, what, uh, what I mentioned before, uh, Omer Reb Shimon, if you take a look at Rashi, it says Omer Reb Shimon that you need special encouragement, special zeros when it comes to something that there's a chosor and kis. Chos and kis means there is a loss of money. What's so, what's so significant of a loss of money? I mean, after all, money, you give it money. The Alter Rebbe explains in Tanya. But if, despite the fact, Baruch Hashem, you know, we can, Baruch Hashem, afford to, to spend a dollar. But money has a very special quality. When a person gives away a dollar, it isn't just that he is giving, he is, has now a dollar less. The, the, the important significance of that dollar is that with this dollar, he could have bought something for himself. He could have benefited something for himself. It's not just having the money in his pocket. Ultimately, if he were hungry and he has a dollar, he could have bought a pier, go in and buy, buy himself a, a slice of pizza. So he gives a dollar away. He's giving away he, the, the, you know, done something that would have, that would have, assuaged his own hunger. Therefore, in giving the money, it seems, it seems almost, uh, you know, over, overstated, but it's not. When, a, just as we spoke about this right and left, and the middle. Money has that that quality, because with money you can buy almost anything, except seichel. And seichel is the guy who says, "Give that money away." In, in, in everything that a person has, a person um, um, gives off his time and gives off his effort and so forth, this is giving a specific element. In money, he is giving something that has no, no particular limit. What is the value of this? It could be food, it could be clothing, it could be giving a gift to a friend. It could be almost anything in a person's, in a person's uh, life. So this is something which, in effect, is representative of his whole being in, in a practical sense. When he gives it away, this is uh, comparable. This, is, this relates to the, to the very element, as we said before, this is the whole person. This is the whole person. And that's why the mitzvah of Zdoka, the mitzvah of Zdoka is so great. And it's called the greatest mitzvah. Mitzvah of Zdoka is considered the, the greatest mitzvah. <coughs> why? Because what is a mitzvah, just as we finish explaining now? Mitzvah is the expression, the, 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 the connection between Eden and Hashem. And the connection between Hashem could be at various levels. Could be in the right, could be in the left. What is the greatest connection to Hashem? 
personal and complete. Not based on the right, not based on the left. Not based on one reason or another. This is a personal connection. And that's expressed in stock. Because the money that you give, if a person has an extra jacket and gives to a person, so I don't need the jacket, he can have it. So why did he give him a jacket? There's a specific, a specific element, a specific limited thing, a definitive gift. Whereas when he gives money, he gives something that is really representative, so to speak, of, of his entire spectrum of anything that he can that he can benefit from. And this is why this is related directly to this element that we discussed, this person to person, this personal thing. He's giving by giving money it's expressing the more you're giving away your soul, quote unquote. Of course you're not giving your soul, but you're giving something that is reflective of your whole being. This is essentially the, the Rashi and the Sikha, of, of course, we, we, we spoke, of, we elaborate a lot, but this is the Nakuda. <clears throat> so coming back, as we always do, coming back to us, which we already touched upon before, it is imperative that we understand these three principles. Every person, every individual has to have a sense of the wonders of being a yid, the special benefit, special blessing, privilege of having a Torah and having, and having all of these wonderful things. Every person at the same time has to recognize the, the seriousness and the responsibility associated with it and God forbid consequences if it's not followed through. These are all serious and important elements. It's called Ahavas Hashem and Yiras Hashem. Ahavas Hashem, the love of God. Yiras Hashem means the fear of God. Both of these qualities have to go hand in hand. One cannot be without the other. And then, on top of it all, there has to be that element that says, there is no, I don't need any reason. I'm a Yid, and this is what I am. Me and Hashem is one thing. Me and Yiddishkeit is one thing. Me and Torah is one thing. I can learn it, I can benefit, but this is not really the reason I'm doing it. I'm doing it because I'm a Yid. There is a there is a an episode that is told about the Mendel Futafas. You all heard of Mendel Futterfass. He's like a, a legend. Mm-hmm. Mendel Futterfass was traveling on the, uh, on the bus in England, I believe it was. Uh-huh. Huh? You know the story? I don't. No. Huh? <laughs> I hope I no, if you know the story, tell it. <laughs> I don't have to be the only one to tell everything. Okay. So he, so he asked the guy if he was Jewish. He said, you want to put on the film? And no, he, he didn't say you want to put on the film. He said, no. he said, I Jew, you Jew. I fill in, you fill in. And the right, comes. right. Well, actually, you have to give you a little a preamble to that. Someone else approached this person oh. and tried to convince him to put on the film. He said, no, 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 this is not for me. Come on, this is, it's not for me. Okay. Mandel Futafas didn't know English. He just came to him. He didn't know English, a word of English. He knew just, you know, I, ah, you. I heard it was, uh, uh, 42nd Street, like, uh, what uh, Well, I heard that there was on a bus. Anyway, so he, he, um, he didn't know English, so you couldn't go and elaborate with him and explain to him the benefits of the field and all that. He just came to him and says, look, he says, I Jew, you Jew. I feel, you feel. Says, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, but, you know. Because he didn't talk English, it's because it was he. In any case, this has to be a principle that we all have to sap in, absorb, 
from your experience in the yeshiva. You have to understand, we are intelligent people. We are not just, you know, being, you know, straight jacketed, do this, do that. We have to appreciate what we're doing. You have to appreciate both from an intellectual and an emotional level. And then we have this level that supersedes both intellectual and emotional. Both Avas Hashem, Yiras Hashem. It's just to know that I'm a human being and know that I'm a Yid. One time in a Sikha, the Rebbe was saying something of this, of this nature. He was saying, um, a person uh, comes up and he says, and he says, why my neighbor is can do, my neighbor is non-Jewish neighbor, my neighbor can do all of these things, how come I can't? So the Rebbe says, if I eat, we just stop for a moment and, and just make the following calculation. That going back in history, going back into our ancestry, while my grandfather, was going around the world and teaching the world about the unity of God, his grandfather was, was eating raw human flesh. <laughs> you know, so how are you comparing? They're different. You come from a different background. <laughs> That's what the Rebbe said to this guy? The Rebbe spoke about it by for and a person has to make a calculation, understand, there, there is something unique, something special. There's a, there, it's different, it's a different, different uh, presence. We have, we have a different gift, a different blessing, not just in terms of right and wrong, good and bad, but in terms of what happened at the time when the Rebbe gave us a Torah. By the way, this applies, of course, to Gadim and everything. Anybody who joins the Jewish people, this is what happens when the Rebbe, when he connects with Rebbe in this direct and and uh, and uh, limitless manner, not based on any kind of, of reasoning or consequence. Along with that, in conclusion, there is right and there is left. There is right and there is wrong. And sometimes one can fail in choosing the right over the wrong. But there is <coughs> human and not human, Jewish and not Jewish, that you can't make a mistake. <coughs> if you learn Tanya, Alter Rebbe says there are different kind of there's shadim, shade. There's shade, shadim hudoim and shadim luchroim. There are certain types of yitzhar hara, certain types of of inclinations and desires that don't even come to a Jewish person. We don't belong there, <coughs> like. For example, to do something intentionally against the Torah, against Hashem. It's not. It's not. It's not within the arsenal, so to speak, of the of the of the Jewish Yisrael. Huh? Some Jews might do that. Yeah, Jews do it on a that, if, when, when it happens, when a Jew does that, which does unfortunately happen, that is something that, uh, that uh, he acquired from the non-Jew. From what? From, the, from his association with the non-Jew. And it is not natural to him, even when he's doing it. So 
Chavata was saying, we are all adults and we have our limited privilege in being in yeshiva and, and absorbing what what Torah and what yeshiva can give. You have to remember the, the most important things to absorb. What you learn and knowledge is very important. But the most the most difficult thing to absorb is the Jewish quality. That which what does it mean to be a Jew? As I said many times, to put on film and keep Shabbos and eat kosher are the easiest things to learn about Yiddish Christ. He had a special feel of what, what it means to be Jewish and to know the limits to something that it's not a question of right and wrong, it's just not Jewish. That's something else. That is this is what you have this is what needs to be absorbed. This is the tzav, this is the Ayid, wherever he goes, whatever he does, he's always representing Hashem. Something that is not representing Hashem is just outside of his ballpark. So now that we are coming to Purim, we should have a fill of Purim, show his Purim, and Purim, as a matter of fact, it's precisely what this is. Purim at the time that Eden recognized fully what it means to be a Yid. And they wouldn't budge, regardless of what the threat is. So, and a good Purim, fair from Purim and all. What? That, in that there is no allowance. In that there is no allowance. But he is representing Hashem is no allowance. No, who says there is leeway? Whatever you, I'm saying, in terms of right and left, how much he loves Hashem, how much he's, he is afraid of Hashem, there could be difference. But that he represents Hashem, then there's no difference. There's no leeway. Thank mm-hmm. you.